So, uh, so yeah, Jorge is going to be talking to us about uh, data quality control and validation with PostGIS at the Portuguese National Mapping Agency. And, uh, and that's a topic which is near and dear to my heart, um, national mapping agencies, because um, particularly in the early days of PostGIS, uh, these were the, the, biggest, the biggest fish on the block. And these are the folks who had the most data to, uh, to manage. Um, and they had some existing, usually fairly tight data quality requirements. Sometimes they had, had, uh, had um, transactional integrity requirements. They actually had operational data management systems in a way that uh, smaller agencies, you know, counties and so on did not. And uh, so it was always cool when a national map agency would, uh, would bring PostGIS on and start using it um, in their day-to-day -day business. The first, the first national mapping agency to do that was EGN, the, uh, the French national mapping agency. I believe actually the Portuguese national mapping agency was one of the ones that came on pretty quick after that, uh, maybe number two. Um, it took quite a while actually for my uh, home agency here in, in Canada for Natural Resources Canada to start using PostGIS, but they've been at it for a good 10 years now. Um, it feels like every national mapping agency now is, is pretty comfortable with PostGIS. Um, and I'm looking forward to hearing uh, what's happening in Portugal. Jorge, how you doing? Hi, Paul. I'm fine, thank you. I, oh, I'm it's... right now a panelist, I, I suppose. Yeah, so, so ready to go. I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna ask you before you get started. You can uh, bring your slides up, but I wanted to uh, I wanted to ask you when uh, when your PostGIS journey started. Um, when did you first start using PostGIS? Oh, uh, I have to think about it, but but I think al almost uh, since the beginning. I'm, uh, <laughs> Uh, I don't know, <laughs> but I, I usually go to every phosphor G events and so okay. on. And uh, since the beginning, since I heard about PostGIS, I'm a PostGIS user and started to be a QGIS user because it was the best one to show PostGIS data. So uh, I'm on, on this since the beginning. Very glad to be here. Wonderful. Talking with you and all the the rest of the people and enjoying this post G's day. It's wonderful. That's great. It would be better to be face to face, but. <laughs> it would, but I have to say the, uh, the, virtual, uh, the virtual format is great to bring, uh, bring this global community together in a way that uh, you know, really wouldn't happen if we tried to do it face to face. So, uh, so this is great. We've got uh, several hundred people in the room with us, uh, lots of our closest friends, and we can, uh, we can do this in one in one big day. So I'm looking forward to doing this uh, in years to come. So why don't you uh, fire up your slides and, and tell us about PostGIS in the uh, Portuguese National Mapping Agency. Let me try to share. Hmm. Three. There we go. Looks, uh, looks good. Are you are you able to see my, my screen? Yep, we can see it, looks good. Take it away, Jorge. Good, good. So uh, I'll try to talk uh, a little bit about uh, uh, data quality control and validation mm -hmm. using PostGIS, of course. And uh, uh, basically my presentation will start with some background uh, uh, about this, this work and uh, Next, I will try to show how this specification is, is written, and uh, I will talk about the tools, but uh, mostly uh, I will talk about the validation tool, which is entirely written in, in Postgres, but has a, a also a QGIS uh, user interface. So the, the former specification for, for, from the Portuguese National Map Agency was based in, in, the, in, in a, <laughs> a thing called multi-codes, which were supported by DGN and DWG. It's uh, something called the user data linkage. Uh, so for each feature, each element in, in the drawing, there, are, there were several codes Relate with this feature, and these codes uh, were assigned according to a dictionary. And uh, the major problem was the overall workflow uh, for the producers and for the users, because they have to use uh, proprietary tools. 
both the producers and the users and it was not easy to manage it, it was, and there were uh, almost no tools just a, a few tools that the uh, map agency uh, developed to to validate this this cartography we are lucky because uh, since uh, 2019 but yes till this year it was uh, uh, producers were able to to deliver cartography in the former specification but right now the specification becomes a, a, a post cheese based specification uh, you, you can't read in portuguese but the the main part of the document the, the the most important part is that it says that it should be a database in in postgres post cheese and I provide, I, I will share the, the presentation. I provide the links here either to the specification, which is a, a, a regular PDF document, something like this. It's, you can read it, or you can also have here the, the links to the data def, the defining language, the, the SQL of the specification. And that's what the users have right now, a document, a nice document, <laughs> good for humans like us, but also they have on the same repository, the, the SQL for each uh, features uh, in the specification. And then I think to have this on SQL is for example, this, these are contour lines, Curva de nível in Portuguese, in Portuguese. But for example, you have a, here a foreign key, and since you have a foreign key, it's really easy to jump to the other table and check the values that are on the other table. So instead of reading the specification and from the specification, uh, notice that this is a code list from another table. It's much easier to navigate in the SQL and jump from one class to, to, to another. Uh, so the most important thing uh, for me and I think for all of us is that since we have an open specification based on open source tools, it's much easier to develop new tools and uh, also to develop new open source tools, tools that people can share, people can enhance, and so on. So I think changing the, the specification really enables much more collaboration between the users, people that uses this uh, cartography, but also between users and the, the National Map Agency. And for example, these tools I uh, will talk about right now are already in a, a repository owned by the National Map Agency, and they are open to receive uh, issues and, and to receive uh, merge requests and so on. It's really, it, it really changed the way we interact with the map agency. So since everything is, is on, on the database and everything is, is open, there are uh, new tools. Uh, I'm just showing the screen here. Uh, it's, uh, for example, a tool that if you have the, a new data set, according to this specification, this uh, simple QGIS plugin will open, it will open it, it will check which tables are there and will create a very nice layer tree uh, with all the layers, uh, in all the themes and with all the symbology and so on. So uh, with just a, a few clicks to select the, the source database, you can have a, a very nice project in QGIS. And even the relations are constructed from the foreign keys. So you can, you can uh, check which foreign keys are on each table and create relations from these, these, these foreign keys. This particular plugin is using the QGIS feature that tries to, to, to create these relations from, from the foreign keys. It's already implemented in, in QGIS and this plugin takes advantage of this. 
I have another tool here to convert former uh, cartography in the in or cartography in the former specification to the new one. We can talk this later, but let, let's go to to our case study. This is more more related with post GIS. So the idea, since this uh, specification came out, was to create a set of, of uh, uh, routines that we can use to, to check if the cartography is really good and so on, and there is no major problems with, with the, the cartography. And for that, uh, we have already in the, in the specification strict rules, uh, I've just take one example that people used to to deal with cartography knows a lot of examples like this one. The the picture is in Portuguese, but it uh, says that every node in the in water streams must be on a water stream, right? It, it makes sense, but in in, in our database. These are two different uh, tables, two different uh, entities. So it's not difficult to, to do something like this. Uh, I want to select all the nodes and the nodes that uh, intersect the, the, the stream, the water stream. So with this uh, 3D intersects, I, I can make sure that the nodes are really on the, on the line not just 2D, but 3D. For example, these this are 3D classes. But this only shows the ones that uh, verifies the ones that intersect. So the idea here in, in, the, in the validation, sorry. The idea here in the, the, the validation is not to see just the, the good ones, but to try to do more than the good ones. So the, the structure of, of the, the queries are almost always the same. Uh, this is a specific query, but it's just to, to see how things are, are being done. So the, this first query is always uh, a select uh, numbers, number of, of features, all, all the features, all the good ones, and all the bad ones. So this query just returns three numbers, the total number of features, the good ones, and the bad ones. And this is the first part of the validation, is try to, to go on and, and see how many features are, are tagged as, as bad, possible uh, with errors. And, and this part of the query just uh, just goes and, and, and counts uh, these objects. The counting is important because if you have two errors in 100,000 polygons, it's, it's not, not very bad. But if you have two errors in five features, it's, it's a, a very high percentage. So uh, we start by counting things. And afterwards, we go and try to identify the features. So this query, for example, tries to select all the water nodes that are not, uh, that does not intersect uh, water streams. So here we try to identify the things that are possible uh, errors in, in, the, in the source. So what this is, this is the, the, the starting point. So the validation framework uses these queries and to make this really, uh, useful. We want to create as many validation rules as we want. Even different users or different producers can add or, or, or delete rules. They can manage the rules. And the rules, as I said, some uh, part of the rules or, or the rules should identify the, the possible errors, but also should count the number of, of errors. So. From this, we created this uh, supporting table for the validation. So 
for the cartography, we created a, a, a table called rules. And in these rules, we can add a row for each uh, validation, we call it a validation rule. And for each rule that we have a name, we have, have uh, several things, but uh, probably the, the most important thing is, is the query that we use to count the features and also the, the query that we use to report the, the bad features. And also in these validation rules, we also store the, the output uh, in terms of the numbers and the errors reported are reported in, in new tables. So we, for example, for these uh, hydrographic nodes, if there are nodes with errors, I create a new hydrographic uh, node table where I put the errors there. So this is the table supporting the rules. So this table can be managed by, by the users. They can add the rules, they can take rules out or just enable or disable rules. There is a flag to enable or disable rules. And even if it is enabled, you can rerun it or do not run it again. So if you are running several dozens of, of validation queries, it, it can take long. So instead of running them all, you can select which ones you want to run. And the, the, the procedure to, to do the validation is just a loop uh, where you, you create uh, a, a loop over all validations that are enabled and have the run flag. And for each rule, uh, we'll execute the, the query. It becomes uh, more complicated because you can have uh, two different levels of detail. You can also have uh, two or different, uh, two or three different uh, specification versions and so on. But the, the, the idea, is this so a table with all the, all the the rules to be checked and then a procedure to iterate all over the rules and if you just use the 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 sql you would call something like that or all the validation rules or you can call each one uh, by one so i can change to QGIS, for example. So, sorry. Yes, I'm, I'm on QGIS, for example. This is a project. Uh, I can open it again. Instead of, of starting with a project, I can close this one. And as you can see, I have uh, here uh, three different connections for, for the presentation and each each uh, connection has uh, the um, the data in the, in the public schema so these all these tables in these public schemas are the the, the ones in the specification so if i put uh, something like uh, polynomial constructions here Sorry, this is in Portuguese. Uh, where is my, no, not sure. Yeah, I have, I have uh, already, yeah. Sorry, I have already the layers, the styles here. Uh, let me check if I can see the layer styles. Layer styles. Let me drop. So this, this project was not entirely, entirely clean. Because I have the, but for any project, we will have the the raw uh, raw data here, and the specification does not uh, 
tell us anything about symbology, it's just the, the contents. And for the contents, you can add the, the, the things here. For example, these are things related with waters, these are related contour lines, and so on. And if you don't uh, use any tool, like the one I've mentioned, we will add each layer to QGIS. But as I said, there is a, I'll create a new project. I have here, a, for example, tool that is able, oh, it's already open. <laughs> but uh, it's just as a matter of connecting to a specific schema and loads and it will go to that schema and loads all the tables related to the specification. And for all these features, it creates the hierarchy according to these major teams and so on. So you can select them all and the output can be uh, several things, but right now we are mostly interested in a QGIS project. And if you do export, it will create a, a nice project with the styles and so on. And since I've already run this before, there was a problem because uh, um, I forgot to clear the layer styles table that are generated in this step. But this is uh, how the things are, uh, are put on QGIS for, for, for the user and for the validation, as I said, for the end user, specific for the end user, we have a, a more nice interface called it uh, validation. Oh, sorry, I was I was already run this before and I didn't close QGIS. The, the forms are still uh, open, but basically, let me change the connection. Wasn't this one okay? No, this, 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 this one, I didn't do did the, the validation. So the things that are here are in fact the validation rules on the table. If I bring my beaver to this window, if I go here, sorry. So this tool, no, I didn't run the tool yet. So the rules are not, let me, sh sorry. I have to make sure that the database is the same refresh. Yes, I need a refresh. So the validation rules are here in this table, which is the same that I see here on QGIS. So I have the rule code, the rule name, the rule description, a very detailed rule description, and also the code used by each rule and the, the, the code used to report the errors. So this is on the, on the database and this is what I do have here on, on, on QGIS. And in, on QGIS, I can select uh, uh, the, the level of detail, as I've said, or the specification version. There is some slightly uh, different validations according to the level of detail and according to the, the specification. And from a point of view of an end user, you just need to read the validation here. And what happens in the background, it's on the server side, on the server side, all the rules are checked and here is you can switch to the log and if you, you in the log you can see the name of the rule which is being executed and for each rule we will say if the our error reported or not and so on so i've then i've used a, 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 a data set which which is not very, it's a small data set. It's like a, a small county. So it was um, fast to, to validate all the rules. And as you can see here, 
immediately after running, I can see the output, the feedback of the validation. So for example, this rule, this rule it's a general rule, rule one, which is related with the minimal size of the polygons. So in about uh, 10,000 polygons, 200 were uh, smaller than the, the minimal size of the polygons. So in, in elements that can be a point or a polygon, uh, the tool have detected the, that this, uh, there are polygons which are really smaller, so they should be points instead of polygons and so on. And as you can see, all the, all the, the elements and the uh, good ones are here and the bad ones are here. So for example, for the points in, in between uh, contours, there are almost uh, 700 and five are not uh, properly in place and so on. And the output is this report that you can export. And if you export this report, you have a, a, a PDF report with the, the name of the rule and the number of elements and the errors, or you can also have uh, something, yeah. For each theme, you can also have the, the details. But you can also close this and go back to QGIS. And in QGIS, let me try to hide all the projects. In QGIS, you have a, a new entry here on the layer tree called validation errors. And each layer that has a, a validation error has the same uh, table name here with the suffix, which is the, the, the number of the rule. For example, this uh, uh, water, uh, it's, it's both related with water. Uh, we have features failing uh, rule number one. I can open the attribute. For example, these two features are failing rule number one, so it makes sense. This is should be a water body and it's so small, it should not be uh, uh, on the cartography. This one is the same, it's a very small water body. Yeah, there is some, some errors in, the, in this cartography. So there is tiny water bodies here that shouldn't be here, but for example, there are also uh, water bodies failing other rules. So we have also uh, water bodies, in this case, 18 failing other rules and so on. So all the errors are here. And uh, this is good for the users that receives some, some cartography or the they cartography that they want. They, they can uh, run this tool and check if everything is okay. It's also good for the producers because they also can run these, these rules and before uh, delivering the, the cartography to, to end user, they can also run these rules and fix the, the things that are here and are probably not okay. It's, uh, as I said, or, or to finish the, the presentation, we are, almost on, on, on time. Just to, to go back to the slides, if I can change back to the presentation. Just to, to add the, the 3D visualization. For, so for some layers, we need to, to check the 3D. And to check the 3D, we have two problems. One, we need to create some, some uh, something like a team. We are in this case, we are using uh, post cheese function uh, delonate triangles to create a team. We create this team from uh, several sources. We create an intermediate table and we create this team. But this team is also uh, uh, is always an approximation. So 
all validations related uh, with the, the tin instead of being fixed. So uh, something must be exactly on the tin. It's, it's not possible. We will have many errors. So everything must be near the tin. So the queries relate with 3D, as you can see here, for example, in this query, we always need to, to uh, create the Z distance between the feature and the tin and uh, to uh, say that something is, is possible bad or something is possible wrong, we need to play always with the distance. For example, in this level of detail, detail for, for cartography about 2000 scale, we have this as must be always less than two meters, for example. And that's the, the point related with the 3D uh, validation. So closing remarks, open specifications are really nice and based on open source make things happen. Uh, a lot of tools are being developed in the uh, Portuguese ecosystem related to the official cartography. More tools are, are uh, under development. This specific validation tool is already on, it was created by, by, by myself, but it is already on the official repository. They, they were very kind to, to, to have the tool here. As you can see, this is on the National Map Agency repo, and this is accepting uh, uh, issues and, and pull requests. And for example, there is uh, a pull request here uh, with a new symbology and so on. So it is really nice to have this uh, running. If you want to know more details about the queries, and it's, 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 there are uh, hundreds of, of queries, you can check the, the repo. And if you can uh, understand Portuguese, I also have a, a video on the, on the a video explaining how this validation works. So thank you for watching. Uh, Paul, the floor is back to you. Thank you very much, Jorge. Um, that, was, that was great. I did actually have a couple of questions and I think we'll see maybe some show up in the Q&A. If you have questions for Jorge, put them in the Q&A. Um, my question is, so I remind myself what my question is. <clears throat> So your, uh, your quality controlling data, which is coming into the uh, National Mapping Agency, is like, I was wondering like what the sources of data flowing into this mapping agency are these days. Like where is the primary data capture and capture happening? Um, I didn't fully understood. Um, so there's your quality controlling new data that's coming in. Yes, yes. Uh, what is the source of that new data? So this, all these, uh, every, every county or, or company that asks for, for cartography, this mm -hmm. cartography must be uh, uh, homologated by the National Map Agency. So they have a tool mm -hmm. that they fill a form and they upload the, the data. And after a few days, then, National Map Agency must tell something about the, if it is okay or not. Right. So the idea, since this tool is is open and open to everybody, the Map Agency can run this tool and check if the data is is according to the the specification. But also the producers can run this validation before submitting the the data to the National Map Agency. Okay. So is the quality control then done by the submitter, they get back a report and are expected to submit clean data? Yes, yes, the, the, the idea is, is to take the, this from the map agency and the producers start to check their own data before submitting it to the, to the map agency. And that's the wonderful thing of, of a tool that is transparent and is available. So everyone can check and use it instead of some obscure validation yes. made by the map agency. And, and it will take a very long time in former days, 
But mm -hmm. right now, since it is in Postgres, they receive the backup and they can receive a SQL or a custom backup. The backup is uploaded to a, new, a brand new database and immediately the validation is run uh, after the, the upload. Right. But not exactly. Yeah. They have to pay some uh, fee. So after pay the fee, the validation runs and checks if the, the okay. data is, is okay. Well, thank you again very much. Um, if you wouldn't mind hanging around um, for, uh, for the next little while to answer any questions that show up in the, in the Q&A, thank you again.